Hey, what's up guys? My name is Joe. Thanks for tuning in for another video. So something about me that people don't really know. When I was younger, I went through a cologne phase and kind of just uh, educated myself about uh, different colognes and, you know, a few different things that it's probably going to be useful. So I thought that it'd be great to share some of that knowledge uh, with you guys for the basics of cologne understanding. So I'm going to let you guys know the main types of colognes and also how long colognes will generally last through different periods of the stages that they go through because they go through stages. The best way to apply cologne and different colognes that are meant for different seasons of the year. That's all I'm gonna have through right now. All right, so starting out with different types of colognes. Now, not talking about specific brands, but rather the general categories that colognes, uh, fragrances, perfumes can fall into. So forgive me if I get some of this pronunciation wrong. I'm trying my best here. So there's three main types of fragrances, uh, starting out with Eau de Toilette. Is that right? So Eau de Toilette is the least strong smelling type of fragrance that you can get. Most men's colognes are Eau de Toilettes rather than a stronger one because uh, generally stronger smelling colognes are geared more towards women who want to give off, you know, a stronger smell than men. And Eau de Toilettes uh, generally range between 5 to 15% of concentration um, in the jar. Next up we have Eau de Parfum, which is different to perfume. A little bit. Basically, it's just a little bit stronger than the eau de toilette. By the way, it's eau de toilette, so there's like a toi with like a W toilette. I don't know if I was saying that earlier. Anyway, eau de parfums generally have between 15 to 20 percent of concentration. And finally, you have just straight up perfume, which is what women use, and that runs at a concentration between 20 to 30 percent. So that is the strongest um, fragrance that you can get. So moving on, after you've picked your fragrance, it's uh, important to understand that they actually go through different phrases, right? Phases. They actually go through different phases of smells, um, ranging from when you first applied it to later on in the day. So there's three stages. There's the top notes, uh, which lasts for about 15 minutes once you apply. So if you apply a fragrance, uh, the fir very first notes that you smell um, are called the top notes, and they generally last between 10 to 15 minutes. So they just kind of, they're opening up uh, the fragrance. And then after the top notes, you get to the mid notes. And the mid notes is kind of the transitional period when the smell is starting to set into your skin. And that smell usually lasts between 30 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on the fragrance that you've got. Now top notes are generally a lot lighter. They're generally more citrusy, more floral. Um, and they don't, they don't have to be, but they're generally kind of a lighter smell. And then you have the mid notes, which is like that transitional period. And then you get to the base notes, which is going to be the lasting smell that your cologne gives off until it just dies out. So pretty much from, I don't know, colognes usually last maybe between 6 to 12 hours, sometimes longer, sometimes less. But the base notes is what your cologne is supposed to smell like. And so these notes can completely vary depending on the fragrance and what the fragrance is designed to do. But it's important to understand that you go through these phases because that means that when you first apply a cologne, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the final smell after it dries into your skin. It's often going to be fairly close, but it may not be uh, exactly the same. So it's worth keeping in mind. So now that we know about the different notes ranging from top to medium to base, uh, base being the longest lasting, let's move on to where's the best places that you should apply cologne. So the best place to apply cologne is to areas of your skin where blood circulates the most because that means that there's going to be kind of the warmer areas of your skin and warmer areas of the skin will help to emit the smell of the cologne or fragrance the best. So both wrists and your neck area are great spots, um, also behind your ears because your blood is circulating through these areas uh, a lot. So a quick tip that I see a lot of guys and girls um, doing incorrectly. When you apply your fragrance to your skin, allow it to air dry and don't rub it together like so. Don't rub it together, don't rub it into your neck because rubbing it actually changes the consistency and uh, makes the cologne give off a smell that it wasn't designed to give off. Now that's being a bit petty and probably doesn't make a huge difference but that is an actual thing. Um, that it does change the uh, fragrance smell slightly. So the best thing you can do is just to spray it on both wrists um, or wherever you want and uh, allow it to air dry rather than actually physically rubbing it into your skin. Just so you know. So yeah, I'm just trying to move through this. I'm sorry if there's a lot of information, but I'm gonna keep on trucking. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is um, understanding which fragrance is gonna be suitable for which time of year. So for example, which fragrances are gonna be good for winter, uh, for summer, for spring, whatever, you know, time of year, depending, uh, often depending on weather. Fragrances that are designed for the winter generally tend to be more sweet. They tend to be more rich and kind of mature and kind of give off like a, like if you can picture like a deep 
smell. There's like a certain deepness and richness that really works well for winter time. These fragrances will often include notes like chocolate, coffee, um, leather is a, is a popular one, whiskey. So kind of these stronger notes that kind of packs a punch. Uh, that's great for winter time because um, it's gonna help cut through the winter air and uh, get its smell out there better than a summer fragrance would, um, for example. Now when I say winter, I really mean like you can wear it for winter, fall, pretty much the cold, the colder time of year. And then um, summer fragrances, on the other hand, tend to be a lot more light. So yeah, they tend to be lighter, they tend to be more floral um, and more citrusy and kind of like a uplifting scent. One of the reasons why lighter fragrances actually work better for the summer is because the uh, sun actually intensifies the smell of the fragrance. So if you're wearing a light, fresh scent, scent. So if you're wearing like a light, fresh scent out in a summer day, then the sun's going to bring out that really nicely and make it smell, you know, great, but still uh, kind of light and fresh. Whereas winter fragrances, when worn in the summer, can sometimes become a bit cloying and a bit overpowering um, and give off more of a smell than you actually want it to. And finally, some fragrances are designed to work pretty well kind of all year round. These fragrances usually include a combination of light smells like citrus and floral uh, combined with kind of deeper, deeper notes of like leather um, or musk and uh, can kind of just be worn in a variety of different situations or times of year. It's important to note that this is a good principle to kind of follow, but at the end of the day, you should really just wear whatever smells best to you because uh, that's probably going to make you happy anyway. So just, you know, you can take this into consideration, but find something that you really like and just rock it because it'll make you happy. So I've got three colognes to show you guys that represent um, the different times of year. Uh, that fragrances are most suitable for. So starting out with winter, I've got Amen, which is also Angel Men, um, Pure Malt, which is super good. It smells fairly sweet, but I tend to like sweeter clones more. So it's got fruity notes, but it's also mixed in with leather and with uh, whiskey, and it's overall a really great winter fragrance. Now for a more summery scent, we have this one right here. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it, but uh, I'll link it in the description down below. This is much more light, and you can be more sparing with the application. Um, because it's not quite as strong. But this one gives off citrusy notes mixed in with a little bit of uh, spice, so that's a nice contrast. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great summertime, summer spring fragrance. And finally, some people might disagree, but I've got Armani Code right here, which to me can be worn all year round. And uh, like I said earlier, that's because it, it opens up with notes of, of kind of citrus and, and light. It, it opens up with light notes, but uh, that kind of dies down into a deeper, uh, smell and it finishes off with a certain richness that to me can be applied all year round so um, I'm wearing it right now in the summer and I'd have no problem to wear it in the winter as well alright guys well there's all my basic knowledge of colognes I hope that it wasn't too much information all at once uh, you can let me know down below if you found something useful I don't want to make this video any longer so I'm gonna leave it with that but uh, let me know which fragrances which colognes you guys uh, like the most let me know down in the comments below I'll be interested in checking that out Thank you guys for checking out this week's video. That's it for now, and I'll see everybody next time.